pigmented villonodular synovitis, sometimes called PVNS. It is a slow-growing, benign, reactive synovial proliferation, characterized by proliferation of pigment-laden histiocytes and giant cells. It occurs in the Middle Age. It can be localized or diffuse. The localized occurs predominantly in the anterior knee. That is classic, and that will have less recurrence. The lesion is usually intraarticular, with or without extraarticular extension. But if it occurs extraarticular, that is called giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath. And this is not related to giant cell tumor of the bone. It is really a superficial, soft tissue, a small nodule that's painless and usually affects the hand, the wrist, and the feet. And that occurs extra articular from the beginning. The pigmented villonodular synovitis is intra articular. The patient complains of unilateral, spontaneous, intermittent, pain and the swelling and diffusion with decreased range of motion. The patient may complain of recurrent hemorrhagic effusion, so if you aspirate the knee, you will get brownish or bloody fluid. It occurs predominantly in the knee, about 80%, and that is followed by the hip. You may feel a boggy soft tissue mass in the knee or behind the knee. How about the x-rays? The tumor may infiltrate and erode bone and extend into the soft tissue surrounding the involved joint. So when you look at the x-ray, you may find well-defined erosions like osteolytic changes in both sides of the joint. That probably is a diffuse, advanced disease. How about the MRI? MRI will show soft tissue masses and effusion due to synovial proliferation. The lesion can be localized or nodular. You'll find nodule inside the joint, usually the anterior knee. You will have low intensity signal in T1 and T2 due to hemosiderin deposition. And this MRI signal is characteristic of PVNS. You can also see a diffuse process in the MRI, especially if it involves the posterior compartment, the anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. The lesion can also extend beyond the joint and you may find erosions of the joint. What is the differential diagnosis? Giant cell tumor is a primary bone tumor. The lesion is inside the bone. Synovial cell sarcoma, it is a soft tissue sarcoma with the translocation is X18, can occur near the joint and rarely is found intraarticular. It does not have giant cells. Synovial chondromatosis. It occurs due to metaplasia of cartilage in the synovium. Patient will complain of knee pain, swelling, locking, and x-ray and MRI will show multiple calcified loose bodies, the call it rice bodies, will be inside the joint. It is chondroid tissue in a synovial tissue, and the treatment here will be a complete synovectomy. Another differential diagnosis is hemophilia or hemophilic arthropathy. Hemophilia usually bilateral, familial disease. Pathology, gross appearance, it will be reddish, brownish, stained synovium with extensive papillary projections. The microscopic histology it will show a mononuclear stroma 
the histiocytes infiltrating the synovium with hemorrhage and hemosiderin pigments, the macrophages with giant cells in the field. About the treatment, if it is focal or nodular, will be excision, arthroscopic or open. If it is diffuse, you have to do a total synovectomy. You can do that open or arthroscopic or combined. Means you do the anterior arthroscopic and you do the posterior open. And that will have lower recurrence rate than if you do the posterior arthroscopic. The problem with PVNS is high local recurrence. Sometimes you use radiation if the patient have multiple local recurrence. But if the tumor is giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath, which is in the hand, the fingers, or in the feet, you will do marginal excision. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.